Hi guys, good morning. Today we are going to discuss about the reticulin stain. So what is reticulin? It is a type 3 collagen present in the basement membrane of different organs. It gives them the structural integrity. And also certain tumors, we see this uh, typical pattern of this reticulin which helps us in aiding for the diagnosis of those tumors. Okay, so there are basically two techniques by which we do this reticulin stain. That is Gomorrah's uh, technique and Gordon and Sweet technique. So now, what is the principle of this reticulin stain? So as I told you, reticulin is a type 3 collagen, right? So it will have a carbohydrate group in it. So the carbohydrate group contains CH2OH group, that is alcohol group. So when we add an acid, the alcohol group will oxidize and give rise to aldehyde group, that is CHO group. And this aldehyde group in the presence of basic pH, when you add a silver solution, the silver salts will precipitate and give rise to a metallic silver. So that silver precipitates will be uh, made a permanent by adding a gold chloride which acts as a toner which increases the intensity of your stain and makes it a permanent. Then whatever the excessive unreacted silver salts are there, they are removed by your sodium thiosulfate solution. So this is the principle of your reticulin stain. So what about the indications of your reticulin stain? So reticulin stain is used in liver biopsies to look for the cirrhosis of liver V because we need to grade and stage the degree of fibrosis which will tell about the prognosis of the patient. And next in kidneys especially in diabetes where we see the Kimmelson wilson uh, lesions that is nodular glomerulosclerosis for that. And next in case of bone marrow biopsies where you want to grade the uh, level of fibrosis because it has a prognostic implication right so like in mds and myeloproliferative neoplasms you want to grade the degree of myelofibrosis for that we do the reticulin staining and next in the lymph nodes as i told you it provides the structural integrity of an organ so there are so many types of non-hodgkin's lymphomas where this structural integrity is lost that means the reticulin framework is lost then coming to the Particular tumors has a particular pattern in this reticulin staining. Example, basket weave appearance you see in the endometrial stromal sarcomas. And chicken wire appearance pattern which you see in myxoid liposarcomas. And in paragangliomas you see a zelbalan pattern. Okay. And in certain gliomas and sarcomas you see a abundant reticulin framework or fibers around the tumors. Whereas in Ewing sarcoma, you will not see any uh, uh, this reticulin fibers, okay. Then, especially in pituitary lesions, like when you are in a diagnostic dilemma, which is pituitary hyperplasia versus pituitary adenoma, this reticulin st uh, stain is your savior. Because reticulin framework are destroyed in pituitary adenomas, whereas the reticulin framework is intact in pituitary hyperplasias, okay. So, these are the few indications of the reticulin stain. So what all we read, what about what is a reticulin, then what are the principles of this reticulin stain and indications of the reticulin stain and what are the two different techniques by which we do this stain. One is Gomery's, one is Gordon and Sweet technique. So now I will discuss a little bit about the procedure of this reticulin stain because I felt as a PG it's a mugging up, right, we usually buy heart. So I thought if we understand the each step and its importance, then no need of by hearting and mugging up. If we know the logic behind why you are putting this reagent first and then the next reagent, right? So I made my own effort to make it a simplified. Hope you people like it. So the procedure is first we take a sections, then we do deparaffinization and bring it to the water, right? Bring the sections to the water. Then first and foremost, what you want to add? It's a potassium permanganate, right? Then only it will oxidize your carbohydrate part of your reticulin stain into the aldehyde group, right? So we add a potassium permanganate, then you wash it. Then whatever the excessive unreacted potassium permanganate is there that we want to remove, right? So we add a oxalic acid. So that will remove the excessive unreacted potassium permanganate. Then what you want to add? We want to add a something which gives you the basic pH, correct? Then only your silver salts will react and precipitate, right? Principle, remember the principle. 
So to make a basic pH, we add some ammonium sulphate, ferric ammonium sulphate, which makes the pH basic. Then we're going to add the silver salts, right? That is your silver solution. Then it will be converted into your metallic salts. But I want to tell you, whatever the metallic salts are formed, that are not visible to our naked eyes. So we want to make them a precipitates so that we can visualize them under microscopy. So we add a formalin. What is formalin? It's a reducing agent. So it converts those uh, metallic salts and helps them in precipitating, okay? So that we can visualize those precipitates of the metallic salts. After that, you wash it. But we want this precipitate to stay longer and permanent in our sections, right? For that, we add a gold chloride, which is a toner. And also, it will intensify the color of those... Uh, uh, staining that black precipitates intensity you want more right so you can see for the permanent so gold chloride will act as a toner and also it helps in the permanent uh, permanent it makes it precipitate as a permanent now whatever the excessive unreacted silver is there that will be removed by your sodium thiosulfate so that's it's about your procedure after all this you will add a counter stain by neutral red fast then put it in the graded alcohols then again you are clearing agent that is xylene then you mount and your sections are ready to go so hope the procedure is also very clear and hope you like this video please share and comment and like thank you guys we'll see you in the next class with some next topic hope you liked it have a good day thank you